hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel Mason african motives still working on engineering science uh, and revisions and question papers on engineering science and two so in this case we are given a question which is actually on heat so let's see uh, what we are given in this part so guys if you are new to my channel you can consider subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from Mason african motives okay so let's um see the first question we're given in this case to define the specific heat capacity of a substance okay that is the specific heat capacity of a substance and we've got uh, two marks for that okay so like i always say that um bring definitions which are in accordance to the exams of uh, netted engineering so the specific heat capacity can be defined as this is the heat energy needed to change the temperature of unit mass so the mass there is one kg of a substance by unit temperature one degree Celsius so that is a uh, the heat energy uh, that is actually needed for a change okay so these are the most important key terms to change the temperature and also the you uh, the use of what of mass of one kg and a temperature of what of one degree Celsius okay so a simple definition indeed um, a boiler on uh, 7.2 operates with an efficiency of 80 percent determine the mass of coal supplied to the boiler per minute if the boiler is if the boiler delivers 50 megawatt of heat and that's three marks for that okay let's see guys what uh, these guys are actually trying to say uh, there is an efficiency of the boiler here okay so let, let's let's try to list down the information on 7.2 here we have got the efficiency of the boiler which is a, it is an eff efficiency of 80 percent that's a that's a great efficiency then uh, we are given that uh, determine the mass of the coal so you need the mass of the fuel which is the coal in this case the one that we need uh, which is supplied to the boiler per minute take note here it's per minute if the boiler delivers 50 megawatt of heat so it delivers which means the power this is the power that is being delivered okay so it's power out the power delivered is the output power so you have 50 megawatts so this is 50 megawatts so what the question now is actually asking us to determine the mass of coal supplied okay in order for you to to have the mass of coal remember we have the formula which connects the the two the mass and uh, the energy uh, which is actually the power in this case we know that e is equal to mass times the heat value okay which is actually the input here so this is the input so since we have the output power you can calculate the input power and since we want the mass that means the mass is going to be the input power over the heat value this is the the input power you're, you're actually taking it from what from the e which is the energy so it's actually e over the heat value so let's try to use this information the the heat value we are going to we need the heat value of the fuel which is the coal in this case okay so this heat value are actually given um here if the heat value of coal which is uh, the heat value of coal is 30 mega mega joules per kg okay so that's 30 mega joules per kg so you've got 30 mega joules per per kg okay that's what we have so remember we said we need the mass here so first we need to have the input power which is actually the energy okay so where are we going to obtain the input power because with the output power we're going to take it from the efficiency remember efficiency is equivalent to output p out over p in okay that's efficiency for you so as a decimal this is going to be divided by 100 it's going to be 0 0.8 from your calculator use as, as a decimal 
so 0 0,8 which is the efficiency is equal to the output power which is the power that is being delivered which is 50 megawatts so it's 50 megawatts over the input power which is p in so in order for you to find p in you can actually cross multiply then divide if you cross multiply here then divide you're going to obtain 0 0,8 p in which is equal to 50 divided by 0 0,8 so that means your input power is going to be 50 over 0 0,8 so all these aspects they expect you to be knowing these so that's why they just use direct calculations okay so this is going to give you 62,5 megawatts okay so since we have the input power now we are going to apply this remember mass is the input power which is the energy over the heat value so that means the mass let's just use m is equal to the input power which is this one that you obtained uh, which is 62,5 megawatts over the heat value and we said the heat value is 30 mega so this is actually mega mega joules and this is mega so it's going to be mega and mega or cancel there so the mass is going to be if you divide properly it's going to be 2,08 okay 62,5 that's 62,5 divided by 30 which is going to give us uh, 2,0833 and so forth so you can just write as 2,08 so that's 2,083 uh, whatever way that you want to two decimal places is going to be 2,083 to three decimal places okay but remember you are working with power and the heat value so that means this mass is going to be in kgs per second remember power is joules per second so this mass is going to be in kgs per second but as here according to the question let, 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 let's cross check our question back again according to the question we need to know the mass that is the per minute not per second but per minute so if this is the mass which is kgs per second in order for you to obtain per minute you are going to multiply by by 60 okay so the mass is going to be this value times 60 which is 2,083 2,083 by 60 you are going to obtain something like uh, 124,98 this is now in kgs per minute okay so remember in a minute we have got 60 seconds that is why you have to multiply by what by 60 so it was like a very very cheap question but uh, yes very cheap in fact but only that there is some involvement of many calculations of which you have to get rid and to be used to these types of these typical types of calculations okay anyways that that was the idea of the question and um on 7.3 we are given a six meter length of copper pipe take note it's a copper pipe here at 20 degrees Celsius is used to transport warm water after which the pipe expands by four millimeters when it adopts the temperature of the warm water so like the the copper wire changed the length take note it expanded by four millimeters so that's a change in length to expand by four millimeters so this is a six meter length which means uh, that is the original length of the what of the copper wire that we are given okay guys that's 7.3 so we have the original length in this case of the copper wire which is six meters then um, the initial temperature actually because you're given that at 20 degrees celsius so this is the initial temperature which is of 20 degrees celsius like this after which the pipe expands so this is the change in length which is four millimeters so millimeters remember millimeters means times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 which means you divide by 1000 which is going to be 0, 0,04 so this is the change in length so in meters it's going to be 0, 0,04 meters so you divide by 1000 milli divide by 1000 okay two meters then the question is determine the temperature of the water 
of the warm water which means after everything which means the warm water is actually going to be t2 because it is increased from this temperature to another temperature okay so how are we going to determine this temperature of the home water which is actually t2 okay uh, this is a copper a material or a copper wire that you are referring or a copper a pipe so we know that guys due to the change in length which we we are having in this case there's a change in length we know that uh, the formula is that the change in length is actually equal to the original length multiply by alpha multiply by the change in what in temperature which is t2 minus t1 so if you are to cross check we need the change in temperature because it is the one that carries temperature second temperature because it's t2 minus t1 so the moment we can obtain the change in temperature it means we can actually obtain t2 so where can we where are we going to have the change in temperature okay the change in length the length has changed by 0, 0,04 this one is there 0, 0,04 is equal to the original length which is 6 multiply by we now move to the alpha there which is um, for the copper material uh, i want you to see these values will be given here so we need the specific the linear coefficient sorry the linear coefficient of expansion which is the linear coefficient of expansion of copper this one uh, which is per degree celsius make sure it's per degree so it's as you can see that's the number that you are having for copper there, the linear coefficient of what of expansion, which is 0, 0,000017. Multiply by the change in what? In temperature. So we are going to ignore the temperature, this T1. Let's ignore it for the meantime. Let's find this change in temperature. You're going to understand much better. So in order for you to find the change in, in temperature using your mathematical skills, guys, these two, they are multiplying. So in order for you to remove this, you are going to divide them. So which means you are going to divide 0, 0,004 divide by this value. So if you divide uh, properly, guys, you are going to obtain something like a 39,22 to decimal places degrees Celsius. So this is going to be your change in temperature. If you divide properly, take note, guys, I said you divide this by this part here you divide this by both this is multiplying so you're going to divide 0, 0.004 divide by six times this number so you're going to obtain this change in temperature okay but i say that the change in temperature is equal to t2 minus t1 so let's apply our mathematical skills now since change in t is equal to t2 minus t1 i have the change in temperature here which is 39,22 so that means that 9,22 is equal to T2, the one that I want to calculate, minus T1. I already have my T1 here, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's what I'm having. So in order for me to find T2, I'm going to transpose this minus 2 to this minus 20 to this side. is going to be a plus 20 like this. Okay, so that means T2, you are going to add 39,22 plus 20. So if you add properly you are going to obtain 59,22 degrees Celsius okay so that is uh, how you could have just obtained this value guys using uh, the concept that you are being given so it's, it's a matter of applying the concept that you're given at the moment and um, by doing so you can uh, actually answer as many questions as possible so that's what we had let's see another question that we had this is um, okay this issue of writing here and closing is now affecting okay but this that's the question that you are given with reference to water explain what is meant by the term sensible heat okay so we want the term that is actually referring to the sensible i mean a definition not a term it's a definition so using this definition, I, I, I mean, I hope it's going to be something that we can appreciate. 
uh, is the sensible heat is the heat added uh, or removed so it's either you are adding or you are removing you remember to remove is actually to subtract something so you're actually adding or subtracting the heat from water which will cause a temperature change so this is going to if you add the heat or you subtract the heat or you remove the heat it's going to change uh, the temperature that is the water in the liquid form so you're actually referring to the water that is not in the liquid form so that is the sensible heat for you guys okay uh, another question on 7.5 was to determine the heat energy required to heat 5k 50 kg of water from 16 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees. So we need the energy, guys. This is the energy that is required. Okay, so how do we determine this energy? Uh, that's on 7.5. Okay, so you know that the energy when you are given this type of a condition Q is equivalent to mass times uh, the C times change in what in temperature where this is the specific heat, heat capacity of what of water since we are talking about what of water here. Okay, so we have the mass in kgs which is already the mass is in kgs that's 50. So it's going to be 50 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water. So this is also mass of water. So the specific heat capacity of water uh, is also there. It's also there. We are given here the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4187. Okay. So this is 4187 multiplied by the change in temperature. Uh, remember that our temperature changed and from 16 to 85 from 16 up to 85 so which means this is your t2 and this is your t1 from that's your t1 from 2 that is t2 okay so to t2 which is 85 that's 85 minus t1 which is uh, 16 change in temperature remember we talked about this that change in temperature actually means t2 minus t1 that's change in temperature okay so using this if you are to simplify properly uh, there is a big value that you are going to obtain let me just uh, have this value with you together that's 50 by 4187 by you open bracket that's 50 minus 85 not 50 this is 85 sorry guys 85 minus 16 like that then you close the bracket so you're going to obtain 1444 five or one five zero like this and this is the the energy which is measured in what in yours okay so measured is measured in yours so you can leave your answer like this but guys you can actually reduce remember three means a kilo six means mega so you can actually move three comma six commas one two three four five six so at this value here we have 14 comma 4 4 5 1 5 so this zero is not important at all because it's after the comma okay so this is now mega joules so mega you move six commas okay but you can of which round off this so you can choose start by rounding off or you can just leave it like that okay so depending with the way that you want to write your answer or you can just write round it off so that's what we had guys on hit and uh all in all that is uh, 12 marks for this 12 marks so you can you can't afford to lose these 12 marks it's just a matter of working with more question papers now on revisions so you really have to revise much question paper so that you don't lose any mark when you are working with what with heat so more questions to come working with the revisions for engineering science n2 and also revisions on mathematics n2 so links are uh, so that we just work on uh, these question papers so if you're not part of the family make sure that you subscribe so that you become part of the family and also don't forget to share our videos to our friends and colleagues so that they also can benefit from this information that you're having from Maison african motives till we meet again